Okay, this uh, episode of our um, study of electrostatics covers the what the electric field patterns end up looking like for um, groups of multiple charges or uh, interaction of different charges. Uh, essentially, you have to look at the electric field. Um, it's a vector quantity. It has direction and it has size. Uh, I have two different charges here, A and B. So if you look at any place um, around those, that combination of those two, there will be an electric field from B, and then there will be another electric field from A. Now each of those creates a vector, and since we want to figure out what is the effect of the two, um, you just have to add those vectors together. So we've done vector addition before. You would just place each of the vectors head to tail. So if you look at the, the one I circled above, uh, we've taken the EB vector right here, and head to tail, we have placed the EA, or the vector from the electric field um, vector from charge A. We place them head to tail, and then the net electric field is the red, the, that's the resultant of those two. And we just do that at every little space in the field, and the overall pattern that we're going to get is going to be the result of all these individual uh, additions of all the different uh, electric field strength vectors. So when we put all those together, this is what we get. Uh, now you can see that the field vectors point outward away from the charges. Notice that makes the charges positive and both of them are positive. And then if you look here in the middle of this one, you see how one is to the left and one is to the right and they're both equal. When you add a positive one, say, to a negative one in the vector uh, orientation you get a resultant of a zero. So right here in the middle of this field we have uh, an electric field strength of zero. There's no field strength in here. They're essentially canceling each other out at that point. Now when you're uh, drawing these interactions of the lines one thing something to keep in mind is that when you draw them the field lines can never cross. So this line could not come out here and go cut across the other field. Okay, since we're adding two vectors, they have to add up to be a single vector, and they can never cross each other. So this one goes out. It's trying to work its way out straight out away from that right-hand charge, but it gets repelled away by the other charge. And we, as we add those field intensities up, these two, um, and I kind of overcrossed there. They should never cross each other. There should be a slight gap in between, as you can see from uh, their original drawing. Okay, so those lines never cross when you're comparing multiple charges. Uh, so a couple of basic charge configurations you should definitely be familiar with. Uh, we saw the two positive charges. Here are two negative charges. Um, the difference really is that the arrows all point in toward the negative. So again, that those arrows are in the direction that a positive charge would go. And positive would be pulled in toward the negative. But if you look at the overall pattern, it's almost exactly the same. Technically, it is exactly the same as the pattern from above. Now, if the two are uh, opposites, they're going to tend to attract. So in the middle here, instead of uh, canceling, we're going to get uh, a, an increased vector. And it's going to move from the positive to the negative. So you can see the overall direction of this vector here in the center. These are all pointing from left to right, from positive to negative. Uh, and we get this kind of uh, uh, the the lines which would have gone out in the space twist back and are attracted to the other side. <clears throat> now, so that's an indication that these two must be opposite. Now, out here toward the other, far other side, again, um, you know, field strength is based on the square, uh, the inverse square of the distance. So the farther that we get from, say, this charge over here the more this becomes just like it would have been had this charge not been here at all. Now, if uh, in both of these cases and the one above, we assume that the amount of charge, Q, or Q, was the same for both. Now, if you have imbalance of charge, then the object that has the larger amount of charge is going to tend to dominate the space. So in this one, uh, I can tell that the one on the right here has more charge, uh, one of the ways I can tell that from our previous installment is that it has more field lines. It has a larger field density. These lines are closer together than these lines are over here. 
Uh, now, since it has a stronger or a larger amount of charge, uh, and electric field strength is kq, so it has more q over the distance squared. Uh, since it has that larger charge q, it's going to have a larger field intensity. So it's going to tend to dominate the other one. And you can see that instead of the zero space occurring in the middle where it did before, now it occurs much closer to the left hand or smaller charge. Uh, same kind of thing here. I can tell this one on the right has more charge because of the larger number of lines. And again, the zero point, that place where they cancel out, is closer to the smaller charge. Uh, here I've got the negative charge has a lot more lines. You can see how dense these lines are in here. See how many of them are packed in that space. So it's stronger. So instead of the up and over here occurring right in the middle, you should see that it's notice it's occurring a little bit more. Uh, over here toward the smaller charge. And uh, in this one, the negative charge here is smaller, has fewer lines. Uh, again, that place where the lines are uh, crossing over there from uh, negative to positive, where they make their turn, the point at which they make their turn from heading out to turning toward the other one, uh, occurs sooner in this case, um, closer to the negative than it did to the positive and that's because of their relative strengths. So uh, we can put these charges together in all kinds of different configurations to do various things for us. Uh, one of the things you might recognize if you think back to a spherical conductor, the charge on a spherical conductor, the electrons are all going to uh, stay on the surface. We talked about this with charging. Now because of that, if we try to figure out the electric field in the middle of a sphere, it's always going to be zero. There's no electric field here in the middle. Because any electric field strength from this one, this charge up here, would be canceled out by the electric field strength from this one over here. Now, it doesn't matter if it's positively charged or negatively charged. Uh, the directions are still going to cause uh, canceling out. So here, this, um, this e field vector would point that way, and this e field vector would point this way down and to the left, and they would cancel each other out. If it had been positive, then this one up here would uh, be pointed toward the center, and this would be pointed um, um, toward, the, uh, toward the center as well, but they still would then be in opposite overall directions, so they would cancel each other out in terms of their field strength. Okay, so that covers some of the basics of multiple charges. Hopefully you've taken some time to look through some of those other shapes um, that are shown in various places and get some sense of uh, what they would look like.